Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain how to solve the problems D and D from the quad forces drawn 336 division 3. In the problem D, we are given an array consisting of n integers and the number of elements is given. And we need to replace the minimum number of elements such that the sums for each pair of elements such that the sum of their position is n plus 1 should be the same. And we need to answer to t cat test case. For this problem, it turns out that we should find a greedy approach because the dp approach will not work since the number of possible states would be up to n squared with the basic dp implementation. And it actually turns out that we can use a greedy approach. Approach which I'm going to explain catch first. Now let's see what happens if we have some pair A B. For simplicity, we are going to assume that A is smaller or equal than B, and we have fixed the value of the maximum k. If we want to make the sum bigger, uh we can do it with at most one replacement up to the sum equal to k plus b because we can always uh, replace the smaller number and keep the bigger number and uh, with two replacements up to, to k. For the sum decreasing, we can do this up to a plus 1 for oh, one replacement or up to 2 for two replacements because we can't have elements equal to 0. And this is true because we can always decrement, decrease the bigger number in order to get the bigger sum. What does this mean? Well, uh, knowing this, uh, we can now create a prefix sum array uh, which will tell us how many replacements are we going to do in order to make all the pairs get to the same sum. And we will need a prefix sum for the increasing case and for the decreasing case. And now the answer will be minimum of the sum of, uh, let's say, for sum i. The minimum value of uh, PS of I plus PSR. PSR because uh, going from right to left. For some I from 1 to K, I equal to 2, uh, K plus K because sums can be equal to a number from uh, 1 to K plus 2. And now I'm going to explain how this works uh, implementation. I'm reading the elements and uh, I'm creating the pairs. Uh, I initially wanted to sort the array and use another complicated greedy approach, but uh, when I was thinking about the problem, I realized that there is some more simple approach. And for each pair, uh, we are going to find these intervals, like the biggest sum such that we can get with just one replacement, and the smallest sum we can get with one replacement if we decrease the sum. And these ifs are there in order to ensure that we don't go over the limit, because I got uh, three wrong answers because of bugs involving this place. Either I was having wrong sum, or uh, I didn't have those ifs, and for some other test cases, the k was bigger, and I was considering wrong value. So one should be more careful when it comes to implementing this, because those limits can sometimes uh, reach uh, such a level that one may end up wasting a lot of time debugging. Now, this is a classical prefix sum problem from this point. And as I said, we are going to take the minimum answer from 2 to k plus k. 
and we should uh, make the prefix time array equal to zero because there are multiple test cases and we should always get the correct answer for each test case. And we don't want to get wrong answer because of not doing this. Now let's move on to problem E. For problem E, we are given an undirected connected graph of n vertices and m edges and the array of prices. And uh, Mike wants to travel from A to B and from B to C in the same road. So we can't actually try A, C, B or B, C, A or other orders. We must go A, B, C. And we have an array of costs. And our goal is to ensure that uh, we find a path with the smallest price such that uh, it goes from A to B and from B to C if we assign values to edges in an optimal way. At the first glance, this turns out uh, that uh, we can solve it with some shortest path algorithm and assign the edges greedily, but uh, we may end up with lots of cases and uh, this is the approach which will most likely get wrong answer because there can be several cases. I have found a simple solution which got accepted in the first try and hopefully it won't get hacked because I'm not 100% uh, sure of my solution but I'm going to explain since I thought it is interesting. At first we should obviously sort the array of costs because we are always going to assign the smallest cost to edges no matter which road we are going to choose. Now, I will do a BFS from each of A, B, and C uh, to find the smallest uh, distance between each of these vertices and all other vertices in the graph. Now, I'm going to move to the sketchpad to present the cases we might deal with. Basically, let's say we have the vertex A, and the vertex B here, and the vertex C here. A way we can go from A to B to C is to literally use a path from A to B and a path from B to C. And we should always uh, take the smallest length of a path from A to B and the path from B to C if we are going to use this approach without any other optimization. But it turns out there is another case which helps us get a better answer. Let's say we have a vertex D, which is not, uh, which can be A, B, or C, or it can be A, B, or C. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to propose the following path: A, D, D, B, B, D, D, C. Basically, uh, we are going to use this path twice in order to ensure the smaller cost. Like, if we are using such an approach, assuming the length of this path doesn't exceed m, uh, we can assign the smallest length to these edges because they are going to be used twice. Then we are going to use, assign edges to all the other nodes randomly, but still the next smallest path. Because as I said, I'm going to sort the array and create a prefix sum array to tell us the total sum of the smallest x uh, cost. And now all we have to do is to do a BFS from A, B, and C. And uh, at first we are going to deal with the normal case, A, B, C. Uh, which will be possible only if the sum of the distance from A to B plus the sum of distance from B to C, which may not be the same as the sum from A to C because of those edges of vertices. If this sum is smaller or equal to M, we can just take the smallest uh, I uh, cost if the length of the path is I. Otherwise, we can take the nodes which are similar to D 
and if the sum of distances from A to D, D to B, and D to C is less or equal than M, we should uh, consider this case when we are going to take a sequence of edges twice. Now I'm going to move to this submission because there are various implementation details I can't explain here. Basically, we are reading the input and creating the prefix sum array, which will tell us the sum of the smallest spots. Now I'm going to do a BFS from each of A, B, and C and keep in sum array the shortest distances. Uh, I have declared BFS with two parameters because I want to keep an array and I don't want to write too much because if I copy paste this code three times it would be useless because it it takes longer. I have initialized the distances with one and uh, in order to avoid using an extra array. And while I'm still in the deck queue, I'm going for the neighbor edges. Basically this is a normal BFS. Since I have declared the initial distance to be equal to 1, we, ha we have to decrement the distances at the end of our BFS. Now I am checking manually the first case, like the distance from A to B and from B to C uh, added up are smaller than M, or smaller or equal. I'm just going to add up the smallest number. I could have just uh, Save time and use an one liner, but uh, when I wrote this line, I didn't write the prefix time yet. Now, uh, if this doesn't work, like for now, we are at the case when we have some node D uh, with the property mentioned in the sketchpad. And if the distance is added up are bigger than M, we can't do this. Otherwise, uh, we are going to add up all the distances. And also the distance from that node to B, because as I said, the path will look like A, D, B, D, D. We are going to add to the answer a uh, prefix sum of the first distance DX uh, multiplied by 2 because we have B, D, B, but actually D, B, D, but it's the same thing. And also we are going to add to the answer the shortest. Uh, distances which were not taken at the previous step and we are going to uh, check if the answer is smaller now we are going to print the answer and as always uh, reset the array because we have multiple test cases hopefully this approach doesn't get, get hacked since I'm not 100% sure of its correctness but given the fact that it passed in the first try this means that it's either correct or the test cases are really weak and they didn't see any of the mistakes in this thinking process. There are any. If you liked watching this video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and also press the bell button in order to be the first one to get notifications about the new video. Also, you can join the Discord server for more nice content and for more interaction with me. Until the next time, stay safe. Stay healthy, good luck, and goodbye.